Okay. okay. Start. Go okay. there. Yep. So we're gonna have uh, Dimitri Kostyuk talk to us about uh, using biometric gadgets for X-ray tests in the UX UI research. Okay. Um, do you hear me? I think yes. As we are speaking about uh, some additional hardware automation in usability research, uh, it should be noted that obviously measurements of some biometric parameters in usability are no way the new approach. There were extremely expensive devices, affordable by large companies and laboratories. And uh, obviously, uh, even if you were uh, an employer of such large company or if you were working in such laboratory, you were unable uh, to use a large amount of such devices in parallel because, well, you had few of them and not tens. Uh, and huh. Last several years, we have seen a um, new wave of really powerful biometric devices which are user-grade and uh, extremely cheap. Mass market production makes them cheap and uh, of course, they are targeted at entertainment and fitness applications as their primary goal, but still they are producing measurements of biometric parameters um, with enough precision, which is, well, uh, it's a really attractive idea to use this data for something useful related to usability. And let us speak about how can we do it. So uh, the typic scheme of testing with using uh, of some biometrics looks like this. You have a user. A user is typing text, moving his, well, mouse, or doing some other things with the software. You uh, track time. Possibly you track errors which user makes while working. Uh, you monitor heart rate. It's the easiest parameter to track. Also, you may track attention level uh, with the consumer grade encephalographer. Or you can even use an um, eye tracking technologies because computer games have reached this level of biometrics. Eye trackers for gamers are not so widely used as joysticks and some other uh, <clears throat> gamepads, but still uh, they are produced and they are in our group of biometric devices we are going to discuss. What can be measured for the sake of usability research. Galvanic skin response. Unfortunately, this parameter is not measured by consumer uh, grade gadgets, typically, and it's a pity because, well, it's the thing which is really easy to measure and rather informative. But we have heart rate. Uh, a lot of fitness trackers are monitoring it. Uh, possibly we can use two fitness trackers or some other tools to monitor blood pressure, but it's rarely used. We have uh, enough cheap uh, EEG devices, I mean an electroencephalography waves measuring. We have enough tools to measure kinematic activity and as I have already mentioned, we have gaze detection. Um, what did we use ourselves uh, in some usability tests, express tests, comparisons uh, for 
electroencephalography devices. The simplest uh, one uh, is a NeuroSky mind wave. It has a mindset modification which is um, non durable. Uh, just the construction was not very successful. You will break it rather soon. Uh, less durable electroencephalography devices are. Uh, is so-called Nikamimi ears, which are, well, cat ears, uh, placed on your head for the entertainment purposes, which stand still when you are um, concentrated on something. They were uh, really popular. They used the same technology of NeuroSky we are using for research. Yeah, but, well, um, we do not discuss them here. Uh, and more comprehensive EEG devices from Emotive. Um, frankly speaking, these are more popular among researchers. Uh, Epoch and Epoch Plus, the newer one, and uh, the most new Emotive uh, Insight. Little bit simpler, um, but still uh, highly capable. Fitness trackers. Our own experience. Um, well, Fitbit charge, um, from our own point of view, Fitbit uh, heart rate measurements were the most precise we were using in our research. Uh, unfortunately, um, open source tools are not very good in getting data from newer models of Fitbit fitness trackers. And uh, really easy to get data from are Xiaomi Mi Bands and MSFit, which is uh, practically the same device from the data acquisition point of view. Uh, if speaking about eye trackers, uh, we have successfully used Toby Rex and Toby 4C. Both are targeted at gamers. I'll speak about this a little bit later. Um, testing schemes, which we can use. Uh, the simplest one is an individual testing mode. So you have a computer with some software. You uh, make user to do any actions. You write down logs, rather typical logs from the testing program, maybe logs from his biometric devices, the ones you have acquired and were able to put on user. And uh, the more interesting variant is parallel testing mode. You just run. Uh, the same set of software and more or less same set of devices on several users at once. You collect logs from all of them and uh, you may uh, run uh, all um, data acquisition scripts in parallel uh, by a starting script uh, or you can make something more comprehensive. We have created our own open source UX dump uh, suite uh, to carry on such parallel testing, which is, well, the link is on the bottom. Uh, but uh, either you are able to have extremely cheap Mi Bands or something like this, and uh, this will allow you to have a representative number of tests in a reasonable time. The main problem of UX research uh, is typically a small set of users you were tested. Well, obviously, the more traditional ways like questionnaires and video recording and so on uh, are really time consuming. And if you are doing some biometric testing in parallel, you get a lot of data in a short period of time, which is really attractive, of course. Well, uh, nothing to speak about um, the devices themselves, uh, just how raw head rate or raw uh, EEG signal from some frequency band are looking, just an illustrative slide. Um, the most interesting part is getting data from the device. Devices are cheap and affordable, you have a lot of them, maybe, uh, but now you remember that their primary goal is nothing about UX research. 
they show some pulse or anything on the screen, but typically not share this data with you. Uh, several approaches are available to get um, something from them. Uh, the ideal variant is using universal AP. API uh, like uh, Qt Bluetooth or Blues. Most of them are um, working via the Bluetooth protocol. Unfortunately, it's as rare a case as it's only possible. API from the device vendor. Uh, two examples are present here. Fit Fitbit uh, Web API, which is placed on a separate slide because it's something terrible. And uh, some special SDK like, for example, uh, Toby Eye Trackers one, which is also terrible, but it, it is not placed on a separate slide. Um, or you can use uh, special open source tools which were written by, uh, not by the developers of the original device, but are able to get data from it. Um, a lot of them exist, and that's the most preferable variant if you have choice. Uh, for example, MindWave um, uh, headset is sharing, uh, comfortably sharing data via the Puzzlebox Synapse project. Initially, NeuroSky wanted uh, some money uh, for the simple suit, which was just able to save raw data, but I don't think they sell it anymore because uh, good open source tools have superseded it. Obviously, the same situation is uh, true for fitness trackers. And the last one is file abstraction. It's, well, not real-time data acquisition, but it also is a good thing to use. Um, I would say that the other really good pulse matters we were using are Garmin fitness trackers. And um, we didn't manage to get data from them in real time, but if you put them into a USB slot, they are pretending to be a flash drive with logs. So it's uh, even simpler than we wanted it to be for our um, goals. A um, little bit more about the vendors provided API. Here you see uh, the strange scheme of dealing with Fitbit Fitness Tracker. It is precise. Well, a um, few words about the precision of fitness trackers. You may uh, have heard that um, fitness trackers are not very precise in measuring heart rate, uh, but uh, they are not very good uh, for active physical trainings, because when you wave your hands, they may lose contact. But actually, our users are not so physically active. And if there is contact, there is a good probability that this contact uh, with the optical sensor will not be lost. <laughs> so, but still, fitness, uh, Fitbit fitness trackers are the better ones. Um, we were able to use to get uh, data in real time, uh, or almost in real time, but the scheme is terrible. At first, you use uh, open source Galileo tool to download encrypted data, which you cannot decrypt yourself. Then uh, Galileo sends this batch of data to the fitness web, uh, trackers vendor website, Fitbit.com, and then you use your own application, uh, which is authorized to get data from the website. And the worst is Toby uh, SDK. There is old SDK, which is unavailable for downloading, uh, which works with older eye trackers. And there is a new SDK, which is available to downloading and which, used, which is named uh, to be usable with all eye trackers, but actually usable only with the last model. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, so, you still have obstacles, but it's not too difficult to overcome them. So, you can calculate also duration of the actions. 
you can calculate number of errors, heart rate, attention level, a uh, little bit more about the attention level of the headset. Uh, it may be um, pre calculated metrics from the vendor, which are used for to measure mind, con mind concentration in games, or you can calculate them yourself. Uh, Pre-calculated are better uh, because they are faster. Calculated by yourself are more scientific, a little bit. Um, gaze detection, a little bit more. After you get uh, coordinates of gaze fixation from your eye tracker, uh, the best tool from our point to deal with this data uh, is uh, GNU Octav which Octave is uh, actually a fork um, of MATLAB and uh, you can use uh, three lines of code to plot uh, this gaze map or you can use a little bit more uh, comprehensive script, the whole script is on the slide, to get nice heat maps, which as you of course know, uh, show which parts of the screen were mostly looked during the test. Um, types of test tasks. Series of different type operations in one program. User has a list of tasks to do. And by this way you can com compare uh, two versions of one program or you can compare uh, maybe uh, two different programs of the same area of application. And uh, you can uh, use different approach, long sequence of routine operations. For example, uh, a lot of clicks or some key types or some other actions. Few examples, really few of them. Uh, one is comparison of the office interfaces. Y here you see uh, three uh, office suits. Uh, two versions of LibreOffice with the top panel and side panel and ribbons uh, from one of the early versions of Microsoft Office with ribbons. How the final results would look like. For example, in our case, um, for overcomplicated interfaces like Office suits I uh, have, not for, mm, you know, uh, if you have simple interface, ribbons are good for nothing. If you have overcomplicated interface, then more than half of your users uh, work faster with ribbons. And uh, smaller parts work faster with a uh, top or side panel. Uh, also, you can compare uh, how uh, the state of the user is different when he works with uh, not the best suits for himself. Uh, red background means that these users are better with top panel. Blue background means that these users are better with ribbons. And you can see uh, that physical load is higher and uh, uh, mind concentration may be higher and so on and you can compare uh, errors. Uh, the other example um, of the second approach, um, this is example of comparing on-screen keyboards with the hardware keyboard of some ASUS, uh, small ASUS, typical ASUS laptop. You can see the same approach. Uh, first of all, uh, you compare speed, you compare uh, errors and you can see uh, if someone had higher errors rate, lower speed but higher mind concentration, in this case perhaps this person uh, was hardly working uh, with the less comfortable tool and if the speed and mind concentration are high it's okay. If the speed uh, is low and the mind concentration is high, it's the worst case, for example. Um, the last slide, I think. Is it okay? Well, uh, so the conclusions are the following ones. Consumer-grade biometric turns out to be enough mature 
to produce us data usable in UX UI comparisons. Even uh, some vendor driven metrics are good uh, if you compare uh, several suits. Then, uh, something good is written here about biometric indicators, indicators that, well, they are good, I think. And uh, obviously, uh, we can use these to save our time. Well, uh, I'll save our time. <laughs> so, thank you. Someone can have higher or lower health rate, uh, and uh, also you can take, for example, experienced user who can who already knows interface or have high uh, typing speed. So Good idea. The better objects are users which are um, which have the same level of ignorance in programs you are testing L often. Then, um, of course. Uh, you should take into account uh, external destructors. Uh, you should randomize the order of suits. Uh, you should do some other things uh, which are rather typical for UX research. And uh, what you can simplify along these approaches, you can uh, compare uh, the results of the same user with several types of software. In this case, uh, his well, state or skills or anything else are relatively the same. But still, what about medical cards? Yeah, uh, of course. But if you do traditional UX research, you have the same problems. And you still have to take uh, these factors into attention. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, we don't have all the time. That was really yeah. amazing. Thank you. Oh.